Well, the first order of business is for me to apologize for being a noob at 3D printing. So if I say things or discuss uh, terms in a manner that are not familiar to those of you who are veterans of the field, that's because this is the first 3D printer that I've ever personally owned. I've used other 3D printers, and the setup on this one has been really amazing for me. There has been some uh, trial by error, I guess you could say, as you can see by the previous clip. Uh, raft thickness and uh, layer thickness and other things uh, were, a bit of, were a bit of trial by error. I was, however, able to get it moving nice and smooth. Uh, it printed great after some support from the Frankensbox team. So I want to thank those guys for being very helpful uh, during this process. Uh, most of the bulk of this video is going to be me discussing my print experience while debreeding these parts, peeling off the layers and uh, just just kind of cleaning them up. Most of my prints are in PLA. Uh, I have some ABS that I haven't tried yet. Told there should be no issue with that. I do plan to do some ABS and maybe even some TPU prints in the near future. A couple of neat features of this printer. I really enjoy the uh, front display here. You got a stop start button. Um, this is a ready indicator. That's a feeding uh, indicator there. That uh, says that the heat is running. An error and a Wi-Fi connectivity. Now I haven't printed with this printer over Wi-Fi yet. I do intend to try that. My favorite thing though, which apparently is standard on, on a good number of printers, but not all of them, is this flexible bed. So it's magnetic and it's held in there quite firmly. But once you pop it loose, it is flexible. So removing your prints from this, so I have one side with blue tape that I've been experimenting with, and then this side is just the regular print surface. Um, when you move this, watch. Boom. Print comes right off of there. Nice and clean. I'll do just a hair cleanup on this guy. And then we can throw him right back in. Here it's snapped down there with the magnets. Pop the tabs. Ready to go again. So that's a nice feature there. Now, this printer, because it's compact nature, is designed to work with a smaller spool. And there's a spool holder here and a nice little lid that you can put on top. It snaps in place with a, a lock turn like this. Now, I've been using larger spools like this one right here, and I've just got it kind of off to the side. There are some neat 3D, 3D models uh, that slot right in here and allow you to put a traditional spool um, on top of this but if you're doing smaller projects or you just really want uh, to be nice and clean and compact there are spools that fit in this spot right here and then you put the lid on it and it's just all included there obviously you have the quintessential benchy here this benchy turned out really well the striations are very minimal uh, layering is Pretty on target here. Now, this was all printed with their in-house software, so I'm sure there are tweaks here. This right here that I'm going to debreed next is a uh, fan trail for a 120 millimeter computer fan. First print uh, did well with some older filament, but I ran out of filament about right here. This is a headphone clamp. This is also a very large print. It's got a lot of support material. Um, I needed, I really, what I needed to do was put it on its side like this. But it was just slightly too large for the print bed. But look at how cleanly that came off. No prep work there. I, I just grabbed that and popped it off. Same thing here. on this guy, he came out really nicely. All 
right, let's see about this guy. Pop the rack right here. Due to the nature of these windows for this part, this uh, material is a little harder to remove than previous ones. I am a new, I'm a very, very fresh in the 3D printing world. It's, uh, first printer I've had in my own possession. I've played with other people's printers a number of times. I have to comment on how easy this was to set up. Uh, now, since I'm not a power user, I wasn't looking for any specific features. Fresh experience for me. But one of the reasons I've never purchased my own printer is that the setup and tweaking and building of said printers always was very daunting to me. This printer came in one piece, ready to print, with two spools. Um, I believe that since I'll be giving this printer away on the R Gadget subreddit in the near future, one of those spools is included for me and one is for the winner of the giveaway. So normally I believe you would get one spool with it. But the ease of setup was uh, shocking once I realized that I needed to use a Windows computer. I tried on a Linux computer and a Mac first. Uh, but once I plugged in the software to a Windows computer, I simply installed it, plugged the printer in, pointed the uh, software at an S, uh, an FTL on my hard drive, clicked print, and out came the parts. Well, and I, I mean, I'd, I had to click next three times. So the first, the first one is, do you want to slice this model? Built-in slicer, sliced it up for me. Do you want to send it to the printer? Yes. Do you want to print? Yes. And then out came the part. The ease of use on this guy very high, higher than I thought was possible, to be honest. I was fairly convinced that there was going to be a large amount of tweaking. If you are looking for an out-of-the-box solution that just works, I'm pretty fond of this one so far. I've been doing some research on price points, and while the price for this is not high, it's certainly not as cheap as you can get. The price point is right around three, or, I'm sorry, $400 US. But this thing is ready to go. I unpacked it, plugged it in, and it was printing within 15 minutes. This thing is in good shape. Honestly, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of primer or something. And this looks like a mass-produced part. And there we go. That's all the cleanup on these. Here's a quick overview of the software that comes with the Frankensbox FX800. They have their own branded software. It is a derivative of Moira. I actually have Moira installed. The interface is pretty much exactly the same with a little branding. Um, you've got a language switch button up here. Let's uh, import a file. Pull in this headphone holder that I've previously printed. All I did was double click on this. And it pops right in. I've got that, as, that file type associated with Moira in my OS. Click and drag here to pan around the model itself. This here is the list of models you currently have imported. You can import multiple models and print them at the same time as long as they're inside the print area. Software will let you know if it's outside of the print area by coloring the model red. So if I scale it up there, you can see that it's red and it won't fit. Move the model around manually with X, Y, and Z coordinates. Um, typically, I just center it and click set plate. Set plate drops it flat on the plate there. Super, super simple. Uh, most of my experience with the software has been open the file, make sure it's centered and flat on the plate, and then click print. Right here. Got the printer plugged in via USB.
rotation features, you'll notice that the uh, rotation buttons are a little strange looking. Um, and you'll, you'll start to get used to them as you play around with them a little bit. I think uh, that could probably use better icons there, but they function just fine. Scale, you can scale it by coordinates, you can scale it by total multiplier. I'm not sure exactly how to, how to phrase that, but this is a multiplier. This is one for one, basically. So if I put a 2 here, it would be double the size. If I put 0.5, it would be half the size. That's one for one as rendered. Got a built-in uh, chopper, slicer, cutter, so you can actually cut the model by measurement. If I wanted to print this in two, two pieces, for example, I could cut the model right down the middle, print one half, and print the other half. This is the support auto-generating, or the, you can add the supports manually if you want. Um, you can set the size of them, the angle. Set these manually, and, and they'll they'll turn light blue when they're valid, and they're gray when they're not valid. Clear these here. Most of the time, what I do here is I do auto generating. The software seems to be pretty intelligent uh, regarding where the supports are needed. Mainly, you see just underneath of this curve over around 60 degrees and inside this threaded area. This is the actual model here that I printed. I've been, uh, been using it. It's pretty handy. Print. Dip into the settings real quickly here. It has an auto leveling feature. Set the distance from the plate that the hot end will start printing at. Other settings in here. This is your limit switch for the door of the printer. This right here is the uh, feed control. So when you're ready to insert new filament or you just wanted to manually feed filament. For instance, if you had residue from one color and you wanted to feed it out with another color behind it, that's this here. Uh, reject is the opposite. Uh, it pushes the filament back out the way it's coming in, into the, back into the Bowden tube. I've only needed to use this once when I had a filament break inside the machine. That's due to some cheap filament that I had. So This is not a super typical button you'd be pressing. It's nice to have the option though. The advanced settings are a little more they're a little more advanced. They are not as granular granular as software like Cura, for example. But this printer is specifically designed to be easy to use. The granularity or lack thereof here is intentional. You can choose yes or no for it to generate supports. In this case I'll say yes choose the type of supports. So we'll do a tree for this guy, the angle at which they'll come in. Whether or not you want to print a raft, um, they call it a model pad. I think it's it's more colloquially known as a raft. Uh, I typically prefer not to use raft if possible. Grid, grid or cellular filling pattern uh, in your density. Now the there are these preset settings over here that are typically just fine in my experience. I've been printing a lot at low resolution just to get the print out the door so that I can see how it handles various situations. Density at 10% is fine. Z-hop retracting is, is nice if you have places in the print where the print head will hop between across gaps for instance. And then your first layer clearance and temperature which I for the most part don't mess with. So this is this model here is pretty much ready to print. I'll go ahead and click the play button. Now it's automatically slicing the model for me. It says, "Hey, you've sliced this thing. Would you like to print it?" Or send send printing file, which is sending the file to the printer. 
and if you were to unplug the printer after it started, it should comply and continue to print. This is basically just a faster, easier way than pulling an SD card out of a reader and placing it into the printer, which you can do, and I have done. But at the moment, it's sending the data. There you see the tree support. I want to print. I don't actually want to print this, this right this second. I just want to show you the interface, but that would be it. And that is the basics of the software experience for the Frankensbox FX800. It's pretty plug and play, very intuitive. I also believe that you could certainly use something like Kira with this machine.